Hello guys and welcome back to the second part of the variable energy tutorials and today we're going to be looking at the properties for the solar panel. Since this block is pretty stable and completely done now, I'm going to be doing a tutorial in about two parts. The first part we're going to look at the actual settings and then we're going to look at the procedures that are actually connected to it. This part, part two, is going to obviously do the settings. Before we get started though, I want to kind of demonstrate what the solar panel can do. I have a battery, a copper wire, and or copper cable, and then I have the battery itself. Now, if we place down the battery, I'll explain a lot of this stuff in a little bit when we hit the procedure tutorials but the red circles are the outputs and the blue circles are the inputs so if we place down the wire it should automatically connect properly and then what we can do is we can grab a wrench to update this block and then that will open up a GUI and then we just want to specify that our inputs going to be at the top because our battery if we go up like that you can see that there's a red output section at the top which we want it to connect to this block which would be the upside so we want to make sure the upside is actually an input variable so when we hook this up it's going to get some power because it's day and if we use energy meter we can see how much energy is actually going in it and as you can see there's an energy capacity of 200,000 and the energy storage is going up quite a bit. So as you can see, that's how it all works. It basically generates power in the sense that it will push it into a wire or some type of device, and then it will push it into whatever device that's connected to the wires or whatever. Let's take a look at the settings. There are, I believe, four different solar panel blocks for this particular one. We'll be looking at just the first one because the other settings are pretty much the same. Okay, so I hope you guys don't mind the mess. This is pretty much my mod, but I'm gonna be doing the tutorial from it as well because all the stuff is already set up here and really don't feel like doing two workspaces and then carrying everything over and just delay the tutorials and stuff like that. So. I'm just going to show you guys the solar panel. The solar panel, the first thing that we need to do is select our textures. We have all four sides. If you have a custom model, then you're going to want to make sure that you select the, your bottom texture for your particles, and then you're going to want to select your block model if you have one. The solar panel doesn't have a rotation because there's only an output at the bottom and we don't really need a rotation for that if there's only one output. If you if you have multiple outputs then you can set up a rotation. It might be easier to do it that way but in most cases because it is a block that's generating just an output you won't need to set up a rotation. It's a solid block because it's just a regular block. Next you're going to want to set up your solar panel name. You're going to want to put it under some type of material property. I suggest using stone or, or pardon me, rock. I think there's rock or iron because you can actually specify what kind of tool tier you want to break with it. So in my case, what we would want to do is set it to a pickaxe and then this will be a stone pickaxe that will be able to destroy it. The next thing that you want to do is set it under a creative inventory. So you might want to put it on a redstone. If you do have an inventory, then you might want to put it nested under something for power energy or something like that, like I have done. The block sound is just uh, metal because it makes sense to have it metal because it looks like metal. You can change it to whatever you want. You have a dirt solar panel, you can make it sound like dirt if you want to. Hardness and resistance. Now you'll have to look up these settings depending on what kind of material you're using. These are the settings for iron blocks, so I just kind of went with that. For the most part, you can leave all the other settings on this row to the default settings. Now, the only other difference on this side is the other blocks for the block states for the solar panels do not have an inventory, so you want to basically remove inventory you can just scroll down and then set the no creative tab entity so you can basically set that to 
your other block states, but you want the main block state to be in the creative inventory. Another thing that to note is the other block states also basically drop the main off state solar panel. So you want to set these two blocks up here to drop the solar panel on the other block states. For the regular block state, you don't need to do that. You can just leave them blank. So let's click on advanced properties. One important thing you're going to want to do is set your tick rate to one. Now I generally don't advise this in most cases, but it, because it is passing energy from one block to another, if it's at a higher interval, it will basically break the system. It'll be too long to actually pass the power through. I've done a lot of work on optimizing the performance anyhow, so it's pretty much safe to set it to one for all your block states. So make sure to get in the habit of setting your energy systems to one because you're gonna to need to do that when you're transferring power to one block to another. I advise not ticking randomly because it does break the system as well, so you don't wanna do that. And the block color on map, you can set this to whatever, it's just the color that will show on the actual map when you render an image or the, the map. I've set it to blue because the solar panel part is blue on top, so you can set that to that if you want to. Everything else here is uh, configured, so this is all default settings, and you want all the settings here as well on your other block states. So moving on, what you want to do is go to tile entity now. You want to enable the tile entity, just check this box here. And you want to do this for all of your block states, so make sure you to enable this. Set the inventory to zero for slots, and then you want to disable these two blocks here. Now it doesn't actually have an inventory, we just need it for the MBT data, so we can use the MBT variables, right? So we're just enabling this so we can pass variables from variable to variable. And uh, going to energy and fluid storage, uh, I have not used the forge energy at all, so we can just move on to triggers. and. Like I said, part two will cover the tutorial on the update tick and all the other procedures that come with the actual solar panel itself. And going to generation, it's just the default settings. So another thing with the events for the triggers, you're going to want to have them all the same for every block. All right, so that basically covers about everything to do with the solar panel. Most of the things that you actually have to change for the actual other states are just the inventory and direct the drop to the main solar panel itself and the rest is all the same. Outside of that, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you in part three. Thanks for watching. Peace out.